So what we have here is a Ludlow matrix cabinet. So this is the uh, convertible 20. They also have a universal 20 which would have had uh, four legs underneath of it and a small compartment at the bottom for storing components. So I just picked this up uh, recently and uh, it's quite heavy even just as uh, the empty cabinet. So we'll take a look at the uh, parts that come with this and talk a little bit about what it is uh, originally for. So it has uh, 20 drawers in it. The drawers are about an inch and a half deep and they hold these uh, trays here. So the person I got it from was using it to store jewelry but she was having things falling out of the trays because they're sitting on an angle. But what it really was meant for was for the printing presses. So I found a, uh, a lead component in here that would have been made with uh, brass blanks that would have been in this uh, drawer. So if you wanted to make a magazine, you had to buy all the different fonts and all the different colors and italics, underlined and bold, and uh, make it character by character. So you, it would have came with like a, a female character for this uh, colon and then you could make as many males as you wanted. So that was uh, the process. So they would uh, cast these in lead with obviously they'd be hot in order to do that. So we'll take a couple measurements here. It has a two by three cutout on the bottom so that you could put your uh, toes under it when you were working. So it's a bit over 20 inches on the narrow side and uh, about 22 and a half inches on the uh, length. Then the width is uh, just under 30 inches. The short height is uh, about 43 inches. And the tall height is about uh, 56 and a half inches. So I've attached some uh, lifting eyes to this. These are just uh, self-tapping screws, so this is not safe for a lot of load. Like when this thing was full, all of these trays would have been full of brass. And I imagine this thing would be thousands of pounds fully loaded. So it's got quite a good weight capacity. So I want to I just use it in the garage here to hold miscellaneous fasteners knowing that it's on a, a pretty good angle. So you can't uh, put too many small things in it. And you couldn't move it because everything would bounce out of the trays. So it comes with a, a wood organizer here to hold different uh, groupings. So again you take this uh, lead piece and in some of them, you'll see that it, if you get it perfectly lined up, it just fits into the spot. So, I guess if you didn't have enough carriers, you could plop them into here, I don't know. It just says, add Kosawan, stamp in it twice. So Ed might have owned this thing at some point. I'll we'll have to look that up and see. Uh, Learn more about Ed. I don't know the history of what printing press it came from. Then being it's uh, disassembled right now, we can look inside of it. The top is uh, single thick. It's pretty much single thickness all the way around, but just tons of steel. You can see where the self-tappers came through. I'll have to put bolts in there or something later if I want to try to lift this with any uh, weight in it. But I just need to get it put away for now. And then you can always move each tray individually if you had to. So uh, I'll start putting this thing together and then uh, I've got a scale. So we'll go and weigh it when it's uh, fully loaded here just with its uh, components and see what this thing weighs. Because it's not listed on any literature. And then the handles should have had a plastic uh, cover in them and then writing on them. But that's not there, but I saw that there was some font names written on the edges of these uh, 
trays. So, I imagine fully outfitted this thing would have cost a fortune back in the day, but now it's uh, not so much. So you can see how they would have all the letters indicated in here, any special characters that would, would have been. And the trays are not all identical. You can see here that the, the spacing is different. So I guess that's what makes it convertible. So uh, yeah, I'll start putting this thing together. Now I'm gonna just lift it with the engine crane. Cause uh, I thought about putting wheels on it, but if you're gonna move it, everything's gonna bounce out of the trays anyway, cause they're not super deep. So uh, seemed like it wasn't worth the effort of doing that. Okay, so I'm just starting to get it loaded up here now. So the trays need to be sitting in that position and you can't turn them sideways. It's uh, not the same dimension in both planes. So they're a little bit rougher than I was hoping that they would be for travel. So let's just take a, a measurement C in here. So it's uh, 20 and uh, 3 quarters wide. And then the depth, or sorry, this dimension here is about uh, 20 inches. And we'll. So it's not quite as smooth as I was hoping. Then the uh, depth, you can see that there, it's about an inch and a quarter. So I'll carry on putting this thing together, then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we've got the uh, cabinet on the uh, scale now. It's a 1,000 pound capacity scale. And the weight ended up being 435 pounds. I don't know if we can get that to show or not. There you go. It's not 935 pounds. The scale is capable of that, but it, it's not that heavy as you would expect it not to be. I'm all the way on. The chain is down. So it's quite heavy all on its own. And then the uh, tech screws are starting to pull out here. It's going to work for moving the cabinet, but that's about it. Well, this is the cabinet's new home for the time being. So you can kind of see the value in it. You can have a lot of small items in here without taking up a lot of space. Like my other toolboxes, the, the drawers are quite deep. So here I've got 20 drawers. I think we're about 20 inches by 20 inches, pretty close, that you can uh, close. Like I said, it doesn't, it's not as smooth as I was hoping. It could probably benefit from a bit of maintenance. I don't know what its history is. Probably hasn't been used in uh, quite a while. Put some fasteners in here. You can't bury them in too deep because if you jostle it, they'll come down and uh, get caught in the rollers. Like I mentioned, you can remove the uh, wood portion here if you needed to. You can see into the, the first drawer. And let's, let's see if the plastic one will fit in there. No, it's sort of meant to be like that. There's a couple of screw holes on the side of the cabinet for what I think was for a light that you could uh, attach on it as an accessory. So there's two holes here, another hole down here. There's no means of locking this cabinet. You could put a lock bar down with the, the holes that are provided. This has something that flips over here that you could lock uh, to keep people out if you had valuable items in here. And you could also cut open that bottom and uh, make some space underneath of it to store things if you wanted to. You hide a couple of bars of gold under there because nobody would ever be able to lift it and find what's under that thing. Probably wouldn't be found for years after you died when they someone moved the thing. So, uh, like I mentioned, the screws are starting to pull out. So at 434 pounds, the tech screws are not the best option. And when this thing is fully loaded and it's over a thousand pounds, it's really not a good way of uh, lifting it. But I thought I'd just document this so you could see a bit about these cabinets. I've only found out about these very recently. So I thought I'd just try to share a bit of information. So thank you for watching.